All right, well, hello there, and uh, well, today we will be talking about something again, as is typical, and uh, today's topic will be NixOS. And we can see if I run a pfetch, which is the fetching software I use on here now, so we can see it's called, say, NixOS 21.05. And what is NixOS exactly? What does it do? How does that so on? What is NixOS? It's a... Uh, well, at the deep level, it's way too complicated, even I don't understand everything about it, even though I've spent like a week or two on it now, like uh, trying to figure things out, it's still very complicated to me, and I'm still, you know, figuring things out, but I have achieved a functional setup, and that's good. But what it is, is that it's a Linux distribution, like any other distribution is, and... Um, it does quite many things quite uniquely. So to begin with, it doesn't follow like the typical structure of files. So for example, if I cd to root, then I do an ls of uh, dash usr. You can see there's only a bin directory. And if I do an ls of that, you can see there's only usr bin and env. But then of course, he's just thinking, where do, we leave, where do we actually put the apps? Where are the apps found? And what do they do? They are found in something called NixStore. So, uh, so you can see there's a place called Store here, and you can see it's all these different like just directories and things. And it might seem confusing given the uh, names, but in practice, what this, what all these files are, they are the different. Well, they are apps, and they are also directories and whatnot. Basically, NixOS, the way it works is you install things declaratively. So what it means is you inst if I open up a file, uh, so we'll do vim, uh, we'll do this, this is the file you edit things. What you do is you go down to, in this file, there's, uh, I have modified this a lot, but there's a uh, area like this where you can put in apps and app names. This will install the software and they will be stored in that previous directory called uh, Nix Star. So all of this stuff here goes there. Uh, so that's how it works and why the apps are not in your Serbian, for example. It's very different in terms of location and that's why that works like that. And uh, Basically, you do everything else in this file as well. So you set, you know, like your bootloader is set here, your networking settings are set here, your uh, X11 settings are set here, like your your X org settings, stuff like that, or Wayland settings or whatever you use. Your layouts are set here, your sound settings are set here, your users are set here, your, you know, I said installed programs, the default programs and such are here. Also, like your, uh, like, you know, if you want to compile something with like custom changes made to their configs, like for example, if you want to go make like SL status or DWM with your custom settings, you do that all here. And uh, you, want, you know, like first I have my DWM config right here. You can see that and your patches here. And uh, basically everything is through this. So that's how it works. There's also some stuff I have done manually here, in addition to all the other things I've configured. Uh, this because I have a very unique setup where I have my root partition as tmpfs, which basically, or tmpfs, which basically means it gets wiped every time I boot. Of course I have, as you can see here, kept some directories persistent because I don't want to lose those. But uh, basically that's the way Nixos works. You use this one file to configure everything. Now that will configure your root partition and such, but you might not want to use for your home partition stuff because it needs root to apply the changes. Uh, so to apply changes you would do as for root, in my case it would be dot dos, then you would do nixos, rebuild, and then switch. And this would rebuild it and switch to the configuration. You may still need to reboot if you change, for example, driver things or kernel things or such. Uh, but if you just change like install apps, you can just do the switching thing and it will switch. And uh, that's how that works. But there's another file you might be interested in, and that's uh, something called Home Manager. Now, this is something you have to install m manually. 
it's in home directory config slash nix uh, slash home nix but basically something you have to install manually so you have to install something called home manager they have a wiki page on it i'll link it down below as well uh but basically this outlines uh you know this outlines your home configuration so you, know, you can configure your home files for example i have set here a uh, configuration of my act of my basher c i believe you can see here like how a progress of bash and then you have like a basher c definition uh so you can use home manager thing to configure record dot files which i have which is what i have done uh i'm not going to explain this too deeply but basically the po whole point here is there's like one file or two files depending on how you want to do it that configure your entire system they have all of your configs in them and they all handle it just like that by themselves and it's a very interesting way of doing things it's very different from anything everything else does and it also means it takes a lot of time to figure out which also saying you know it's complicated it's it's i still haven't figured it all out and that's because it takes so long to figure this stuff out you have to learn this next coding language that you make your configs in you have to figure out you know how to actually do it what the syntax wants how to do the configurations correctly how to do everything it takes time now you could like use standard dot file directories but like that kind of breaks the point of Nix, so I wanted to use Home Manager and I figured it out eventually, but it took me many, many hours. And yeah, it's a. Uh, it takes time. <laughs> uh, but beyond taking time, it's uh, fine. It, it works very well once you figure it out. Uh, of course, it's only going to work with NixOS or with Nix if you want to install Nix on another distribution, because you can install Nix on any distribution. It's the package manager NixOS uses, it's something you can install anywhere. I missed it in Nix because I, or NixOS because that's what I want to do. I want to just have a standard NixOS install. And yeah, it's cool, but it does take effort. It also, like, it's really weird sometimes. And also, like, the whole Nix language, like the one you use to configure things, the error messages are really bad. They don't really tell you a lot. They don't, they don't seem to go in order. So, no, the error it mentions isn't necessarily the first error you get. It's a some error in some line. Uh, that may happen later. It does tell you what line it is and what position on the line. But it's quite hard to actually see like the actual position on the line and also like the actual message it tells you what's wrong is very unclear. It doesn't actually help much. It's it's very hard to tell what's actually wrong about the line because the error message is really poor and uh, or really bad. And it's uh, and like it might be a third source before it uh, in the code, even though it gives you that one. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty confusing. It's not a very, it's not a very good error message. The language itself works fine, but the error messages are really bad. Uh, that's and it's not those are not good. However, the newest version of Nix twenty four, which isn't in this stable engine yet, because I only I'm only using a stable stable branch. Uh, but there is a current release uh, unstable branch, and uh, that one I believe already has the Nix twenty four version, which does have improve that stuff so it actually gives you the line and tells you where the error is it's not perfect but it's a lot better now uh in that version so if so it's going to come soon to stable branch 2 or in some months i guess because or because it comes every six months with the table updates but it's going to come along and uh, with it coming along the you know the actual next time should become better Another problem I have is with the documentation. Uh, so the documentation does not like the basics of how the language works, think how you know how to configure works, stuff like that, but it doesn't really explain how to do anything. Like it has a link, like it doesn't explain anything like how to uh, configure a particular app. Uh, it doesn't tell you it links you like an option thing, but an option thing that, that lists all the options doesn't really outline what those options do or how to use them and or it does basically tell you how to, what it does, but it doesn't tell you how to use them. And uh, overall, it's a very confusing documentation because, for example, if I look at like Chintu or Arch, it will have a ton of pages for like the different apps and the different software, you know, how to configure things, how to set up things. Nixos doesn't really have that. It just outlines how the actual Nixos configuration works, and that's about it. And the thing is, you can't really use like Arch documentation or Chintu documentation or whatever because Nixos is very different. It doesn't work the same way as those do. And that's really annoying. It's. Uh, it took a lot of time, but they do have a very friendly community, 
uh, and they have the community has been very helpful to me uh, figuring this out, and that's good. But yeah, the documentation could use some work. Uh, it's not very helpful coming into trying to use Nixos. I can tell you that it's going to be a commitment trying to learn this thing. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. Don't don't expect to have a good experience right away. You need to figure it out. It takes time uh, to figure it out. And that's just how it works. And that's unfortunate, but it's true. Uh, at least in my case. Beyond that, like if you look more at the positives, there's like no package installing issues. Like because Nixos, the way Nixos works is to basically get the packages like the actual software together with the like dependencies. Uh, that means you don't get like error, you don't get like errors or issues because dependencies don't work. You don't get any of that when Nixos. Also, the repositories are really, really big. They are like one of the, they are like one of the biggest like repositories. And beyond being like really big, the actual software selection is really good. Like they don't they don't leave out important things in favor of like nonsense things. It's like a lot of like software I use, also, well, I was able to get everything from the repositories and it's really, really good repositories. The installing is also very simple and the declarative thing, like, you know, being able to do all in one files is very good because you can basically manage everything in these individual files. And that means I can just back this one file or two files up to like my GTA server. I can just back everything up I or put everything on the server and I can just uh, get it all back and Unix NOS installation and I can have everything installed the way it was. And this became very useful because what I did at one point was I wanted to make my system so that it's so it has a read or so it's a read only like immutable uh, temp TMPFS root partition. What this means in practice is that your root partition uh, gets wiped every boot. Uh, and um, the issue with that would be you don't want everything to be wiped on boot. You don't want your home directory wiped. You don't want your, you know, own configs to be wiped. But if you do this on a normal distro, where, you know, configs are set in different files in different directories, um, those, it's really hard to, you know, make sim links with those and uh, bind those and, you know, and bind mount those so that they don't, you know, get lost. But Nixos is different. It has everything in like a few places. So I was able to literally just, you know, have my like a few individual directories. Like what I have like five directories bind mounted. And that keeps all of my personal stuff. Everything else is handled in the Nixos configs, which I also have, you know, bind mounted to not lose them. And now I have a root partition that works on my TMPFS on my RAM. That gets swapped every boot, but some directories are stored on my SSD, uh, and those directories are all the important ones. And that's all thanks to the fact that I can configure NixOS to actually, you know, manage things individually. I can get NixOS to store things in temper. I can configure NixOS to store these few directories uh, that everything is in to actually stay. So. It has benefits to it, you know, it's very useful when you want to reinstall or when you want to have things stored and, uh, you know, of course I did reinstall for making that change, so it's like, I was able to get my system running in like a few minutes because I already had the code fix in those files, it made it very easy and it's very convenient. Of course it becomes less convenient if you want to go away from Nix, but as long as you're using Nix, it's very, very convenient and it works very, very well. Uh, so. Something in out of something nice, something cool uh, that you can do with that stuff, and uh, it's overall very interesting. I'll uh, discuss this whole thing of you know doing the the root partition temporarily uh, later. There's a guide I followed. I'll link that down below as well, and I'll uh, in the description, and I'll act, I'll make a video on it as well, uh, just to give a visual representation of what the guide actually does. And also to discuss its benefits and its problems and so on. You know, what has been like for me with that specific setup. This is more about Nixos in specific. That is not something you have to do. That is something I better manually did myself alone by choice. So it's really something you have the freedom to do. Something you can do if you want to. You can really do things as you want. Uh, but beyond that, it's 
a very interesting distribution. It's very different. It does things its own way. And it, it's really hard to figure it out. Uh, but once you do, it works great. And I might move this permanently. I have been using it for like a week as my day driver now. So it's like, yeah, it works well. It's I'm really liking it. Uh, it's uh, really cool. And uh, we'll see how it goes in the longer term. But for now, I am actually staying on NixOS. So yeah <laughs> hope you enjoyed it it's a bit famous because that's kind of what it's really hard to talk about this distribution in specific uh because of how different it is uh and uh, how it works some way uh but uh i'll link everything below of that i is interesting you can read up on it and uh i leave you there if you have any comments to make any questions to ask feel free to comment it and uh, i'll get back to you about that at some point